chapter 4, just keep continuing on where we've been. I'm going to try to teach if I can. Uh, hopefully it's not preaching. <coughs> uh, let us therefore fear, lest a promise uh, being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we sh which have believed do enter into the rest, as he has said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, uh, just a couple of things I was thinking about this week when I was looking at it. Um, is first of all, it said, let us uh, there, therefore fear. And uh, I know that he's not the author of fear, uh, but when he's writing uh, uh, the book of Hebrews, when God gave us the book of Hebrews, he's giving it to the Jewish people. Uh, and a lot of them are unbelievers. Amen. So it's not just written to believers. But the book of Hebrews is written uh, uh, to, to the lost and to the new believers, new Jewish believers, uh, that they can't, so that they can understand that Jesus Christ uh, is the uh, uh, meaning behind the entire Scriptures. Amen. Uh, they speak of Him. And Hebrews uh, links the Old Testament so beautifully uh, uh, with the New Testament, uh, showing us the consistency of God. Amen. And I, when it's talking about fear, I was thinking about in chapter 3 uh, how he showed us. Uh, am I too loud? Am I back there? A little loud? Okay, I'll tune. Trisha's the only one honest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's not dead this way. Okay, so uh, with the fear, I don't use a, you know what, that, that place I was teaching at in Gethsemane, they, uh, everybody was retired and half of them uh, couldn't hear and that was the only place in my entire life that I think people asked me to speak up for their <laughs> and uh, well, I <laughs> they, they fell short in uh, they fell short in the wilderness didn't they? that's what he talks about in chapter 3 I mean the Jewish people God had promised them uh, a, a place a uh, place uh, of their own, where they could rest, and uh, they didn't. They they fell short. And, and, and what is it? Kardashian Bar Barnea? Is that where they fell short? Yeah, they they, 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 they they fell short there, I Amy. Mean. And so they weren't able to enter in. And uh, and then uh, we think about the fact you know uh, Moses didn't even get to enter in. He got to enter up onto the hillside and see what was his that he never got to inherit in this life uh, because of disobedience. And, uh, you know, you, you can look even further back and you can say, Adam, I mean, uh, everything was perfect before Eve ate him out of house and home. And, and, uh, and he never really uh, got to fulfill what God had for him uh, because of disobedience. And, and then the Jewish people, when they finally were were ready to go in. Uh, rather than accepting on faith, they uh, sent in the spies and they and they came short. And so the author here, he's telling them, I think there's a, a twofold message to the unbeliever. He's saying, hey, hearing the word is not enough. It's got to be mixed with faith. Amen. But I think there's also a message to the believer here uh, that if you really want to enter into that rest that God has intended for you in this life, amen, uh, it's got to be mixed with, with faith. And unlike the, the Jewish people there that he spoke of in Hebrews chapter 3, uh, real faith leads to real obedience, amen. Yeah. Am I getting louder again? I am. I am. And so he said, so lest the promise... Uh, being left for, and, and so I just had a couple of thoughts about the rest, amen. I, I mean, uh, uh, Satan doesn't want you to enter into the rest. Is that, that, that's pretty true, isn't it? Yeah. And he doesn't want you to enter into the rest. I was thinking about there, uh, uh, I believe it's in Matthew, uh, uh, I've got my notes there, I, I 11, and, uh, Matthew chapter 11, I believe it is, where uh, uh, the Pharisees are, are talking about the washing of hands and they're, they're accusing the disciples. And uh, Jesus begins to talk to 
to them about how uh, they would keep the commandments of men uh, uh, and they would lay this heavy burden upon other people, upon everybody but themselves. They lay this heavy burden that you must keep uh, uh, this certain uh, uh, group of, of uh, <coughs> excuse me, of commandments outside the law. And Jesus accuses them, and, and I had wondered what that was all about there. And, and I remember now hearing a, a preacher one time explaining. He said that Alexander the Great had come in and had conquered such a great territory. And he said that uh, after he had conquered that uh, great ter territory, he had no children and he died. And uh, he left it to his four generals. It was divided. And two generals, one was up on the uh, uh, north of uh, Israel, and, and one had the area of uh, uh, Israel, I think it was Ptolemy. And, uh, and then uh, when they died, Antichrist's Ford came down, and uh, he came into Israel. I hope I'm getting this exactly right or, or pretty close. I'm just trying to set the uh, picture for you. And he came down and he did the, the abomination that leaves desolate. Amen. He brought in uh, the unclean animal into the, uh, uh, into the temple. And there he slayed uh, 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 hogs in, in the temple and spread the unclean blood that was unworthy to be in the temple, in the temple, amen. And, and he did unthinkable things as he uh, carried the women and the children uh, out of Israel and he uh, made it against the, the law to have uh, the scriptures and, and to keep the Jewish law. And he had made Israel uh, uh, to stink in the nostrils of God, amen. And the historians tell us that certain uh, uh, groups uh, there within Israel uh, uh, had accepted uh, uh, the Greek way, amen, and, and they had moved more towards the Greek and become more and more liberal. And the Maccabeans, uh, Judas Maccabees and his four brothers led a revolt that, uh, that uh, overcame uh, the, that conquering power. And uh, although Israel was not a nation again at that point, uh, uh, they were uh, uh, freed from that oppressor. Uh, and they decided that they would reinstitute uh, God's laws. But unfortunately, you had two groups. You had the Sadducees uh, that didn't believe in the supernatural. And then you had the Pharisees that uh, were the fundamentalists, but maybe uh, they went a little too far, amen, and they said, uh, in addition to what God says, or, or our interpretation of what God says is, in addition to uh, uh, abstaining from blood, uh, uh, you can't light a candle on the Sabbath, amen. Yeah. And you can't clean the silk off a of cord on the Sabbath, amen. If you did that, that's uh, you're violating the law, amen. Jesus, go ahead and answer. <laughs> One him? Okay, just check. <laughs> oh, man. And so what, what they did was they, had, they codified uh, righteousness. They, they, they made it a list of things you can do. And, uh, that, I can't even remember what to call it right now. Give me a second. I got it in my notes. I have to look back at it. I'm slow. The Talmud. They put it in a Talmud. I can't believe it. I couldn't remember that. And so uh, they said, you know, if you do this and this and this and this, then you're, you're righteous. But if you don't do that, there are things that weren't listed in the Bible. I mean, you know, it's not like... Uh, Alcohol. I mean, the Bible clearly tells you you can't drink that. Amen. I didn't know if I could get an amen or not. <laughs> but uh, there's some things you don't have to pray about, right? And uh, I remember hearing Brother Danny Farley preach one time on separation, and he was kind of going towards this Talmud thing, and he, he said, he said, you know, he said I couldn't smoke a cigarette and be right with God. He said I, I just couldn't. He said, but I grew up in Texas, he said, where the preachers smoked. Or cheap back. He said, you know, everybody knows who Spurgeon is. Spurgeon smoked a cigar. He said, he said, 
He said, God deals with you at different points in your separation. And there is no, there is no definitive list of things outside of what the Bible spells out right that, that a man should or shouldn't do. He said, when you start doing that, what happens is you start getting to the point that actions, the actions you do make you more righteous. He says, it's not like that. It's all about the blood. You can't, you can't get away from it. It's just about the blood. So anyway, I want to get back to the to the rest. So what they were doing there with, with, with the Talmud was the people couldn't rest. They were always on edge. Amen. It's a tough thing trying to be good enough uh, to match up to God's standards, isn't it? <laughs> Isaiah tells us, he said, that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Uh, imagine what our filthiness is. Amen. And uh, so the rest has to do with trusting in, as he said uh, in the last verse I read, the work that had been finished before the foundation of the world. I mean, he was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world, amen. And God sits outside of time. Genesis 1 1, he created the time, space, matter continuum, amen. And God uh, is not limited by it. And in the mind of God, Christ was already dead and resurrected before man set foot on this land. And uh, so, you know, talking about trying to be good enough to enter into a rest and feel like you're good enough outside the grace of God. The problem is you know yourself. You know you're inside, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're not perfect. No. You might fool, you might fool people at work, and they might think that you're, you're perfect. I doubt it. You might fool the preacher because he only sees you for a couple hours. But chances of fooling your spouse or your children is pretty slim. <laughs> but you never have a shot at fooling God because He sees our thoughts. You know that Bible. It is a discernment of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And uh, so it, it gets down to the real matter. And uh, so as we're sitting there, matter of fact, I was thinking about it last night, and I just kind of put myself a note down there. There are several parables that deal with the, not only the difficulty in, in telling the real thing versus the counterfeit, but the fact that God does it, that it, He divides it. Uh, you know, the thief coming at midnight is coming for the real thing. And I, I know y'all have all heard that one, and then it's uh, the bridegroom coming at midnight. You remember the virgins there? Ten of them didn't have the oil. They were all virgins, and so we, we, we're to assume that they were all mortal. But yet, only with those with oil that represent the Holy Spirit were able to go. And then with the, uh, the in the harvest with the wheat versus the tares, and uh, we're told there that the difficulty in, in telling the difference in the two. And so we're talking about entering into the rest, and the fact that while man may be moral, he has to be saved. He might be moral by man's standards, but he has yeah. to be saved. Have y'all ever met anybody that was like lost and thought was a really good person? Yeah. I've heard a lot of preachers say that's not possible. It's, I've, I've known, I've known, I've known good people. You see, moral has is a character issue, and you might have good character, but, but not be saved. And then the other thing is when people get saved. It doesn't just automatically change your character right away. It takes, it takes time. And uh, that's some of the things that over the years that I've had to learn. I thought when people got saved, they're supposed to be perfect. But uh, talking about trying to enter into the rest, it's the realization that it's what he did, not what you did. Not what you did. Trust in Brother Orange Sailors used to sing with the journey. 
And I used to work with Lawrence, so I knew he was a good man. And Brother Lawrence told me, he said, he said, Greg, he said, they told me I had to speak in tongues. And he said, I tried, tried, tried. He said, they gave me things to rehearse. And he said, he said, my heart just wouldn't let me do it. He said, if it didn't come for God, I didn't want it. Yeah. He said, I tormented myself. He said, I almost was institutionalized. He said, I couldn't deal it. He said, I didn't want to go to hell. And he said, I wanted to know God. He said, but there I was trying to do something to get to make myself righteous with God in an activity. We couldn't do it. it. It keeps people from entering into their rest. And when people think they can lose their salvation, it, it keeps them from really having that joy and peace, that rest, and knowing that they're that they're okay. And so, that's uh, uh, one thought I had. I wanted to just kind of give you a couple of thoughts on that and uh, a couple of verses, and I had to come back to this. But it says, uh, well, let me, let me read you Galatians first. It says, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 2 says this, only what I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? My, my old pastor to old church, Brother Ed, he used to always say, he'd say, how are you going to work to keep something you can't work to give? That's right. How are you going to be good enough to keep something you're not good enough to get started? And that's one of the tools of the devil to keep you from having that peace and that joy that you really need. To serve that confidence that you know. Went to hear a brother preach one time, Brother Ed, and the preacher got up and he said, If there's anything in my heart that would keep me from going to heaven, Lord. And I thought, How sad. I know this man. He's a great man. Yeah. A great man. Yeah. But the devil was trying to keep him from entering in, in the flesh. Yes, he does trying to keep him from entering into that rest, just having that perfect peace and joy. As long as you're trying to work it, work your way in, you'll never get there. As long as you're trying to be good enough to feel like you're worthy, you're on the wrong road. I mean, you might be saved, but what happens is you, you're going to come from the realization at some point you're not good enough. Matter of fact, if you feel like you're good enough, you, you just got a bad detector. Matthew 11 and 28, I just wanted to read this to you. Come and to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So as he's calling out to those Jews that are under the oppression of the Pharisees, no doubt a lot of good people, sincere people, that want to know God. And they're always made to feel like second-class citizens. But they don't pray on the street corner because it, you know, maybe they're shy. They don't pray out loud. Yeah, and uh, they don't give their, they don't have to give a bunch of money at the back of the church or front of the church or whatever because maybe they don't have to give, have to give. Whatever it is, the devil's just trying to be in bed and sometimes he uses God's people. We have to be careful that we're not somebody to keep somebody from entering into the rest. And entering into that rest. Because for by grace are you saved. Ephesians chapter 5. Grace are you saved. And that not of yourselves. Yeah. Uh, through faith. And that not of yourselves. And so it's all of grace. And that means that you didn't you didn't do anything to get it. Right. And I was thinking about also. So we're talking about that rest that comes from knowing Him, but also the rest that comes from serving Him. Now, the other, I guess it's been a couple months ago, I was laying in the spare bedroom because I, Christy cut that fan on and I had the gout going on. I can't remember exactly what it was going on. 
I went in there and said, I'm sleeping in there tonight, and I got on that bed, and I don't have a table beside that bed. And I pulled a chair over so I could set my phone on there so when the alarm went off the bed, I could grab it and get up and go to work. I rolled off. When the alarm went off, I spun violently and rolled off, and my neck caught on that chair like that. And I was wrapped up in a cocoon, and y'all gonna laugh at me. I sleep like eight blankets, sometimes more, yeah. and I wrap up in them. And uh, my grandma used to lay those heavy quilts on me, and I guess it just, just like it. And uh, <laughs> couldn't get out. I think my neck hit, and I hurt. I've been hurt in my back ever since, but my neck hurt me for a while. And uh, I was just too close to the edge. That, that little startle from the phone, it caused me to crash. Because I was just too close to the edge. I was fine. I was up on the bed. But if you want to enter into that rest and you want to have that peace in this life, it's not about being good enough. It's just about trying to get, you know, as close to Him as you can. So that when that alarm goes off or that one little disruption in the night that you're not expecting goes off, you don't crash at Y'all seen that happen before, baby, spiritually. People crash. My Aunt Ann and Uncle Wayne, they got me in church. When my Uncle Wayne died, my Aunt Ann, she just, she was, fell out of church altogether. Didn't go back. She just quit going. And uh, I just, I don't understand it all, but I, I know that, that you can go one or two directions and, typically not going to sit still when there's an alarm goes off. And you have to kind of predetermine which direction you're going to go or, you'll, or you might crash. Mm -hmm. But uh, chapter 3 spoke of how Israel, I talked about that, how they had failed uh, to, to gain all that they were supposed to have gained in this life. I did want to give you just a couple of thoughts uh, also about the, the rest that's available. It's available to all. And the reason I, I wanted to throw that in here was uh, two fold there's some stuff in I think in chapter two that when we we're covering it, I thought, well, I need to come back to this, this is available at all. And also a lot of people try to promote it as if only, that salvation was only available to the Jews. But as you read through uh, the first five books of the Bible, you'll find that any that would agree to do so, uh, they couldn't be prevented uh, as long as they would adhere to the rules. Now there was a court of the Gentiles and they, they could only go so far in the service. But Titus 2 and 11 says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live uh, godly, righteously, and soberly. And soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And so he said, it's appeared to all men. Now, before I got saved, I don't know if I've told you all this, there was a, a teacher, Mr. Edwards, in the ninth grade, who sat us down. And I, we would go to church a good bit, mom and dad would. And uh, not as faithful as most of y'all or any of y'all probably. <coughs> but he destroyed my faith. And that's the way he did it. He sat us down. He, he told us he was a secular humanist. And he sat us down, and piece by piece, we, he took our faith down one day. And one of the things he talked about was people in Africa that had never heard the gospel. And uh, from the ninth grade until I was 23 years old, I mean, I, I basically had no faith. I'd gone from a household of faith to, to someone that just... Not only did I not believe, I, I opposed the gospel. Yeah. And uh, that was why I didn't believe it was sincere. But he tells us here in Titus chapter 2 and 11, he said, For the grace of God to bring salvation has appeared to all men. Oh. And you say, How did it appear? I don't know all the details, but I know that every family has had it. Amen. Yes, sir. And there's a responsibility within the family. To pass it down. And I know uh, that we're taught in Hebrews that if any would seek him, uh, that, and, that he would uh, make it available, amen. Yeah. <coughs> but 
finally I had to go uh, to those verses that said, uh, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And I trust the character of God, amen. Yeah. Now, John uh, 3 and 15, I, let me say this as well. I preached at Cedar Creek in Hartville, Georgia. And I, I don't mind saying they're, they're good people, nice people. But somebody had put something on the back uh, in the hallway from the convention they had had that year. And in the convention, they had decided not to address basically Calvinism. And let each church decide independently. And I thought how sad that the Baptist churches have reached that point. Because if you can't understand that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. You've missed a basic principle in God's Word. And John 3 and 15 says that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now that word eternal, we talked about it before, is a mathematical term that means without increase or decrease. Yeah. Amen. He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him uh, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that means life without end. So you've got something that's not going to increase or decrease, but it's not going to end. So it's not going to be like this life uh, where I watched my grandfather uh, live to be, uh, I believe it was 88 years old, but his life diminished, diminished, diminished. But it's not like that for the Christian. Amen. Uh, we're going to have, we have, not going to have, we have life eternal and life everlasting because we believe. Amen. Yes, now, if you want to see for sure, I just want to read you a couple more scriptures. That he wants all men, says, For God, this is good and acceptable in sight of God our Savior. Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. The Lord, in 2 Peter says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come up to repentance. Yeah. I mean, how much clearer can it be? It's whosoever, whosoever, all, every man, yeah. uh, that none should perish. Amen. Yeah. How much clearer can the Bible get? Yeah. Talk to a talk to a man who was a uh, cross dressing homosexual. My best friend's brother at the time. And the reason that he wouldn't come uh, to God other than the fact the Bible said that because they love their sins, amen. Uh, and he said, well, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. And I wasn't chosen, uh, uh, so therefore I can't be saved, amen. There are people out there that uh, uh, report that to be the gospel. That's not good news, amen. That's yeah. bad news, amen. Yeah. 1 John chapter 2 says, And he is the perpetuation, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. It, it can't get much clearer than that. Then about, and then uh, Romans 10 and 9 said, That if I shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So the means is by faith, and there is no, uh, there is no restriction. It says, If thou art a Jew, or if your mama was a Christian or your daddy was a Christian, but you'll believe, amen. Yeah. Now, I've shared this one uh, with y'all, and I'm not making the progress I'd like to make. I hadn't got going to give it out. I'm going to share this and just call it with us. I read that book. I think I may have shared this with you guys. Fire in your heart. And the guy doctrinally is not exactly in line with us, but. As I was reading that book, he said, he said, God had laid on his heart to go to Russia. Have I shared this with y'all? And it was during the time when the, you couldn't get, to, get into Russia. They suffered for business reasons. And he said, he said, 
That can't be of God. He said, but he kept dealing with it. He said, I don't, he said, God, I don't speak Russian. And if I did speak Russian, I couldn't get in there anyway. And what am I going to do when I get there? And he, another, God put another man in his life. And it, and it opened up the door for him to go to Russia. He said, he got to Russia, and he wanted to spoke Russian. He said, when he got there, he said, the only thing he could think was, he said, he said, if anybody can speak Russian, I mean, English, it's going to be at the university. And so he asked the cab driver, as they tried to communicate, he said they couldn't communicate finally, he said, he said the word university. He said, the guy knew what it was. He said he carried there, and he said they looked around the university trying to find someone that could speak English, and they saw a building that had different languages inscripted across the top. He said, that's a language building. He says he went over there. He said there was a man sitting beside a pillar. He said, I walked over to him and said, Son, he said, I don't know if you can understand me. He said, God has sent me to tell you about him. And he said, that little boy looked up at him. He said, tears began to roll down his eyes. And he said, my whole life I've been told there's no God. He said, the government told me there was no God. He said, the school told me there was no God. And he said, even my parents have told me there's no God. He said, last night, he said, I lay there looking up at the stars and said, God, if you're there, won't you show yourself to me? He said, now here you are to tell me. He said, as he uh, began to share the gospel with that young boy, he said that that boy translated for him. He said, he led him to the Lord and said, he was able to preach with that boy translating. He said, me were believing at the university all the way up to the point when the cop showed up and arrested him. The point of the whole thing is, I believe with all my heart that man does have a part in this thing mm -hmm. sharing the gospel. We have a responsibility. But when somebody really wants to know God, yeah. God will make a way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God will make a way. He'll still use people. But you might not have the privilege of being the one he uses if you're not obedient. And you'll never know that rest that you should know, that peace, that joy, unless you're obedient to it, unless you're trusting it. I like that old song we used to sing when I was a kid, Trust and Obey. That's the only keys to the Christian life right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, Brother Palmer, you want to dismiss this one?